This voice is not very good, it's a bit croaky, isn't it? He said no sex before marriage. Yeah. Did he miss that one? Oh, he just said it earlier. I don't like the vinyl stuff. I mean, the kids are too ordinary. I don't, I don't like that. I think that's something. Well, it's kids. They're not nice as others, are they?
sacrifice for you. He was the perfect sacrifice for you. The perfect sacrifice. And if you trust in him, I guarantee you, you're safe. If you put your faith in him. But if you put your faith in Mohammed, he's dead and gone, finished. You put your faith in Buddha, he's dead. You put your faith in Charles Darwin, he's dead, he's gone. You're not going to get anywhere. You put your faith in the great philosophers, they are gone, they are dead. But you need Jesus Christ who died and rose again. Do you want now? Yeah, yeah. Put, put your hand in there, yeah. He's the lamb that was shed his blood for you. He's the lamb that was prepared for you. He was the perfect lamb who knew no wrong. When he died on that cross, he died as a savior. He died on that cross as your Lord and savior. There, he was the lamb that hung on that cross who was perfect, who knew no sin. He was the lamb of God who knew no sin. He was the lamb of God who knew no sin. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. You need your sin taken away. Have you ever lied? Have you stolen? Have you slept around? Have you been full of anger? Have you been full of hate? Have you been smoking wacky wacky? Have you been taking crack cocaine? Have you been into material things more than God? Have you got drunk? We've all sinned, we've all made a mistake, we've all let God down. But He was the Lamb. He was the Lamb that was shed for you. He was the Lamb that was prepared for you. The beautiful Saviour. Oh, He was beautiful, He knew no wrong. He was perfect, He never lied, He never did anything wrong. He was perfect, holy and pure, and He was prepared for you. He was prepared by God for you to die on that cross, to die as a saviour. They scourged him. They laughed at him. They mocked him. It says in John chapter 19, in John chapter 19, then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put it on a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold, I bring forth to you that you may know that I find no fault in him. He had no fault. He did no wrong. He never ever sinned once. He never ever sinned once. Yet he was being laughed at. He was being mocked at. He was being whipped. He was being humiliated. Why? He was being humiliated for you. He was being laughed at for you. Because there is a judgment day. There is a judgment day. When you do things wrong, when you do things wrong, it doesn't end when you die. There is a judgment day. You do come before God on judgment day. Don't lie. Have you ever lied? Don't steal. Have you ever stolen? Don't commit adultery. Have you ever committed adultery? Don't commit adultery. Don't commit adultery. Don't lie. Don't steal. Don't get drunk. Don't mock God. Don't curse God. Don't have an idol of money or sex or power. Don't have an idol and worship it. Don't do these things. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in the place that he called the pavement. Then delivered he therefore unto them to crucify, and they took Jesus and led him away. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him, two other with him, on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. They crucified him. 
They crucified him. He did no wrong. His own people crucified him. He done no wrong. But his own people crucified him. His own people said, crucify him. And when they took him, when they whipped him, when they mocked him, when they spat at him, when they hit his face, when they lifted him up and nailed him to that cross, when they did that, he was dying as a murderer, but he'd done no murder. He was dying as a thief, but he'd done no thieving. He was dying as an adulterer, but he'd done no adultery. He was dying on your behalf. He was dying on your behalf so that you wouldn't go to hell. That's why he died. You got a question, sir? He died on that cross on your behalf so that you wouldn't go to hell. Do you want to go to hell? Do you want to go there? He died for you on that cross so that you wouldn't go to hell. He died on that cross so you wouldn't go to hell. That's why he died on the cross. Oh, the crown of thorns. The crown of thorns upon his head. Look at him. Nailed to the cross. A crown of thorns nailed on that cross for you. Shedding his blood for you. Look at him. How he died for the thief. How he died for the murderer. How he died for the adulterer. How he died for the anger, the hatred. Look how he died. Look at him how he died. Behold him. He who knew no sin died on your behalf. He brought reconciliation for you and me. And he brought it with the cross. He brought it with the cross. That's why he died on that cross. He brought it with the cross. He paid it with his own blood. So that you could be redeemed. So that you could be redeemed. So that you can be washed and clean. So that you can be forgiven. Or do you prefer the drugs? Or do you prefer the lying? Or do you prefer the stealing? Or do you prefer the gossiping? Or do you prefer the anger? Or do you prefer to get drunk? Or do you prefer to sleep around? And if you prefer it, then you're running right into hell. If you prefer it, then you're running right into hell. hell here's and there is hell. no hope for you if you do that. But there is a hope for you at the cross. Yeah. At the cross, he showed his love. God demonstrates his own love to us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He demonstrates his own love for us. God bless you. He demonstrates his own love for us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Every time you look at Paul, he died for you. Every time you gossip, he died for you. Every time you were full of anger or hit someone, he died for you. He died on that cross to bring you home. He died on that cross to bring you home. So I'll go home and I won't preach again if you can answer this question. When you die, what will happen to you? What will happen to you when you die? When you die, what will happen to you? I tell you what will happen, you come before God. And you need to know Christ, you need to know the Savior. If you don't know the Savior, you're lost. If you don't know Him, you're lost. You're lost forever and ever. You need to know Him. You need to know His love. You need to know His grace. You need to know His kindness. You need to know Him. And if you don't know Him, you're lost. Because He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the King of history. The King of your life. And if you reject the King of your life, if you reject the King of history, then you're lost forever. You're lost forever. You need Christ. You need Him. Who is the light of the world? You need Christ. No, there is life in Christ. Life in Him. Life more abundant in Him. You don't have to sit in a bedroom smoking wacky wacky all week. You don't have to swear like a gangster rapper. Swearing like a gangster rapper thinking you're a hard man. You ain't hard swearing like a gangster rapper. You ain't a cool dude if you're swearing like a gangster rapper. You ain't cool swearing in front of your mum or swearing in front of your dad. I swear it in front of your parents. But to know Christ, 
We've all made mistakes. We've all failed. I failed. But he died when I surveyed the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. The Prince of Glory. The glorious Savior, Jesus. Oh, he's glorious. He took your blow. He took your punishment. He took your whipping. He took your judgment for the things that you did wrong. He took blow upon blow, humiliation upon humiliation to save you. And you said, Jay, I don't want it. I'm going to go to hell on my wacky baki. I'm going to go to hell on my crack cocaine. I'm going to go to hell sleeping around. I'm going to go to hell. I don't care, Jay. Well, Christ cared enough to die on the cross for your sin. He died enough for you to die on that cross for you. So you need to care. You need to care. Because if you reject him, that is only weeping and gnashing of teeth. You said, Jay, how can you say there's a hell? How do you know there's a hell? I'll tell you how I know. Because we live in a moral universe. Because what you sow here, you reap in eternity. That's why you need to know Christ. You need to know him who died for you. So pull up. Pull up and come home. Pull up out of the drugs. Pull up out of the drink. Pull up out of the gossip. You don't have to fiddle the electric bill. You don't have to fiddle the gas bill. You don't have to con the tax man. You don't need to do that. You don't need to be an Arthur Daly or a Del Boy. You don't need to be ducking and diving. You need Jesus. You need the Lord. You need the Savior. You need Christ. You need Him who came to die on that cross. He took the whipping. He took the humiliation for you on that cross. Oldham, come on. Wake up, Oldham. Wake up, Oldham, wake up. Wake up. Don't go to the nightclub this week. Don't go to the nightclubs and get drunk. Don't go to the nightclubs and have a, a one night stand. Wake up. Wake up, that'll take you to hell. Don't be having a one night stand. Don't be going and getting drunk at the nightclubs. Don't be fighting on the streets. Wake up. Wake up. Awake, Oldham. Awake and realize that God came down and God died for you. God shed his blood. Lying is not a way to live. Stop lying. Thou shalt not lie. Have you lied this week? Did you lie to your girlfriend? Did you lie to the government? Did you lie to the tax man? Have you lied this week? Thou shalt not lie. Don't lie. Don't lie. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not steal. Have you stolen? Don't steal anymore. Don't steal from the government. Don't steal from the council. Don't steal from the tax man. Have you stolen? Thou shalt not steal. How dare you steal? How dare you lie? How dare you commit adultery? How dare you do that? You're breaking God's law. And God has come to die for you on a cross. No talk, fellas. He come to die on the cross to bring you home. No talk, fucking He come to die on the cross to bring you home. He came to die on the cross to bring you home, sir. He came to die on the cross to bring you home, sir. He came to die on the cross to bring you home, sir. He died on that cross. He shed his blood for you, sir. Have you ever lied, sir? Have you ever lied, sir? Have you ever lied, sir? You're talking bollocks, you. Have you ever lied, sir? Yeah. Well, he died for your lies, sir. Did he did, He did, sir. I've seen good. Have you ever stolen? Yeah. He died for your stealing. Did he did, He did. He was whipped. He was scourged. He was mocked. He was humiliated for you, sir. You're talking He died on that cross for you. You're talking bollocks. He bullet. died on that cross for you, sir. You're talking bollocks, man. My friend, he gave his life for you on that Listen, cross. Listen, I've seen a demon five times in my life. Not five years. But have you trusted Jesus, sir? I've seen you. No, have no, you no. Have you trusted Jesus, you sir? You don't see Jesus. Have you trusted you Jesus, you sir? See, you only see Christ. You don't see Jesus. You don't see Christ and the demon. Have you trusted Jesus, you sir? No, I've seen him. They come to me. But have you had faith in you him? You don't even know what you're on about. The demons have seen Jesus, but they don't believe in Jesus, sir.
You can see Jesus, but it don't mean you believe in him. It doesn't mean you believe in him. If you've never seen Lucifer, you've never seen a demon. How can you stand the name of cross? I know there is a devil, sir. I know there's a devil. But what I know is that Christ died on that cross. He gave his life for you on that cross. He shed his blood for you on that cross. He gave his all for you on that cross. That's what he gave for you today. My friends, when he was don't know what you're about. answer this question, and I'll go home if you answer it right. Yeah. Go on, man. When Jesus was in in the courtyard, I don't know Jesus. Right? Don't cry. They whipped him. They scourged him. They humiliated him. Yeah. I don't know. They Jesus. laughed at him and they Jesus mocked him. They me. humiliated him and they laughed at him. Let me ask you this: Why did he get laughed at? Why did he get mocked? I don't know. I'll tell you why. Tell me. He was the lamb that was shedding his blood for you. He was dying on your behalf. As your savior. He was. He was dying as your savior. He was dying as your Lord, sir. That's no, why. Listen, he, he was dying you. for you. My friend, he gave his life so no, much for you. Listen, he listen. loved you so much. The wrong guy the stick no, here, Jesus yeah. gave his he life for you. He gave his life for you on that cross. He gave his life for you, sir. He, he did. He gave his life. And you need Jesus. You need him as your Lord and your Savior. No. That's who you need. You need Christ. No, he was nailed to that cross. And he was nailed on the cross for you. Let me ask you something. If you died tonight, where are you going? No, you don't have to. If you believe in Jesus today. And be reconciled to God. And know that God can be your Savior. Know that God can be your Lord. I've sat with demons. I've sat with the devil. I, my friend, there are demons, many, many demons. I'm not but the most about important thing, Jesus is over the demons. Is Jesus, no? Jesus destroyed the demons. When? When he died on the cross, he destroyed evil, sir. Oh, so they all got, all and died. And you need Christ, you need Jesus, you need the Lord, you need him as your Lord and Savior. I've already got him. No, you haven't. You need him to believe in him and to turn to him and trust I don't in him. Think you know what and you have about. faith, I do, sir. I tell you why. Do you know why? I, because I'm an ambassador of Jesus. Have I speak on his behalf. Have you met Lucifer? And I know Jesus personally. Sir. Have you met Lucifer? And Jesus says this have in his word. Lucifer? Jesus says this have in his word. I, I felt his power. I, like that. I felt you, his attack. If you met but I'm covered in the blood Listen, of Jesus. Stop talking. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. Sir. Shut your mouth for no, sir, I will preach, sir. I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. I'm here to preach, sir. I'm here to preach the gospel that Christ died on that cross. He shed his blood for you. He gave his you life for you. The devil the is destroyed, body. sir. You the don't devil know what is you destroyed. God bless you, sir. Have a lovely day. Do you want a coffee? <laughs> Let me buy you a coffee. Can I tell you? Do you want Have a you coffee? Have you met a demon? Do you want a coffee, Have sir? Have you met a demon in your life? Do you want to come for a coffee? Have you met a demon? Okay, I've offered you All a right, coffee. What does a demon Jesus come with? Jesus died come in many cross. forms, demon. No, the no. The no. Yeah, demon that comes sure, in one. one. The devil was destroyed. The demons are destroyed by Jesus. Their power is gone because his blood was shed. And when he shed his blood, he destroyed the devil. He destroyed the demons. You don't have to fear him anymore. My friend, talk more about Jesus than demons. Talk about Jesus, the Lamb of God. Talk about Jesus who gave his life for you. Talk about him yeah, man. who gave his all. You should be a My friends, Jill. they said that Jesus was mad, you but he was the son of God. Jill, yeah. You need Jesus. You need Jill, have Jill, you ever yeah. stolen, sir? Of course I have. Have you ever looked at a woman in lust? Oh, oh, yeah. Jesus died for your lust. He died for your stealing, sir. He died for those things. You know what I can... I, 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 I'm trying to get around my head here. Right. You've got one... You're one focused man, you. On Christ, sir. Yeah. So you're saying you're the side... You're saying dark side here. I've been to the dark side. You haven't. I have, sir. Right, then what's the demon look Before... Like? Before... Before... What's the demon let, me tell, let me tell what's you... Let me tell you... Out of the way, sir. Wait a minute, we've got Peter going somewhere. <laughs> yeah, there's someone, the, the BBC, no, I'm always talking. Jesus defeated demons. It says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. The Bible teaches about demons. You're mad, but dude. Jesus died on that cross and defeated demons, sir. No, he didn't. He defeated demons. No, he, he did. Didn't. He did by his blood. That's why he's in the courtyard. That's why they watched him. That's why they mocked him. That's why they humiliated him. He died on your behalf, sir. And that's what you need. You need Christ. You need to repent and believe in Jesus. You need to trust Him. That's why we're here today, to share the love of God. Jesus loved and died for you on that cross. And if you want to get saved, you look to Him. You believe in Him and you trust in Him. There's truth 
It's truth, it's not a lie. You can provide evidence if you want evidence. Do you want any evidence? Do you believe it is Islam? I'm Muslim. You're Muslim. Why do you buy your Muslim? I'm a Muslim, I believe Ashadu Allah, Allah, Ilm Allah, Ashadu Muhammad, Rasul Allah. The religion is the Jews of Tarim, make it with the Mahadan. Let me ask you this. Surah 6, 34. What is Surah 6, 34? Don't talk to me about your religion, I'm Muslim. Surah 6, 34. Don't talk to me about that. Surah 6, 34. What is Surah 6, 34, sir? Don't talk to me, man. Surah 6, 34. Surah 6, 34 says, My word does not change. So why, as Muslims, do you say the Bible's changed? Why do Muslims say the Bible's changed when the Quran says, when the Quran says, the Bible hasn't changed? The Quran says, the Bible's not changed. So why do you say it's changed? So, let me ask you this. Why do Muslims say the Bible has changed? Why do Muslims say the Bible's changed? When the Quran says, when the Quran says, the Bible's not changed. Surah 634. Surah 634. You need to read your Quran. Jesus came to die on that cross to save you. And I just want to say, sir, you swore at me. I don't think Muhammad would have sworn at me, sir. So follow your prophet, sir. Jesus Christ died on that cross. He shed his blood for you today, to give you a hope and a future today. So come on, olden folks, pack in the drugs, pack in the wacky backy, pack in swearing like a gangster rapper, pack it in, pack it in, pack it in, no swearing like a gangster rapper. Did you swear last week, sir? Yeah, I did. No swearing like a gangster rapper. Jesus, you swore, you swore Jesus died on that cross you for you. I didn't swear, he swore. He went against the Quran. He went against the Prophet. So you trying to say you never swore in your life? I swore, but I'm forgiven in Jesus, sir. He died on that cross for me. He was scourged and mocked for me on that cross. Are you forgiven? Surah 34, what does it say, sir? Are you a Muslim, sir? Yeah, I am. Surah 634, what does it say? I'll tell you what it says. Surah 634 says this. It says, my word cannot change. Do you know the context of that, sir? I'll tell you the context. I'll tell you what it says. It says they tried to defeat the messengers and then your Quran says, my word cannot change. So the messengers is this, sir. So why is it, why is it, why is it, why is it Muslims say the Bible's changed when the Quran says it's not changed? Yeah? He died on that cross to save you. He died on that cross to bring you home. He died on that cross to save you. I'm waiting my breath on myself. Do you know this city, this town? Do you know it? Yeah. yeah. Do you know where I'm from, sir? Where are you from? I'm from Holden, sir. Yeah. So I have a right to preach in my own town. I was born in Cheddar. I lived in Worth, and I have a right to preach that Jesus died on the cross. It's not just for Muslims, sir. But all them, it's for everybody, sir. Yeah, it's for everybody. No, yeah, everybody, sir. Not just for Muslims. Everybody, yeah. He came. For this land is for everybody, not just Muslims. I have a right to preach in my old town. I have a right to preach in my old town, sir. I have a right to preach in my own town the gospel that Jesus died on a cross for my sin and your sin. He gave his life on a cross. So get used to it, Muslims. The gospel will be preached in Oldham, yeah? Jesus Christ gave his life. Sort of 634. You're swearing at me. As a Muslim, you're swearing at me. You don't represent all of Islam. You don't represent all of Islam. Most of the Muslims here will not say what you're saying, sir. In fact, I'm well known in this town by the Muslim community. And if the Arabs found out what you're doing, they will not be happy with you, sir. Jesus died on that cross. He gave his life for you. He said, his blood for you. He gave his all for you on that cross. He died on that cross for you. And that's why we're here today, so that you could come home to heaven. Come home and know him as your Lord and Savior. Come home and know him as your King. Come home and know him as your God.
When Christ was in that courtyard, they searched him with a whip. With a whip, they put knife and bones. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. you agree with me, don't you, sir? Yeah, thank you, sir. They, they put whips and bones, they whipped him with bones and steel. They whipped his back. But when he was dying, he was dying on your behalf. He was dying for you on that cross. He was giving his life for you on that cross. He was shedding his blood for you on that cross. That's why he died on that cross. He gave his all for you. And we want you to go to heaven. We don't want you to go to hell. Jesus gave his life for you. Jesus shed his blood for you. He gave his all for you on that cross. If I die tonight, I'd be happy. Do you know why? Because I've told you how to get to heaven. By believing in Christ, by believing in him. My name's Jay. You want to talk to me, ask questions? Come and ask. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Take care. Turn it off. Because Muslim or Islam, I've lived in Manchester now for four months. Just one second. No, no, you said, you said your point. I just want to continue. I haven't finished. No, you said your point. Yeah, I, no, I, I haven't finished my point. I haven't finished my point. I let you continue all of your points. Okay? Uh, in my religion, it teaches us to respect all. I've been living in Manchester now for four months. And alhamdulillah, I haven't had any incidents. I haven't had any. You want to know why? Because I respect every person no, who is okay. Muslim, Amen. Christian, Amen. Jew. Amen. <laughs> Anything. Amen. Right. Okay, so let's Number one, I'm talking to you, You're just I'm most respectful. I want to get that on camera. This guy has been an excellent Muslim, right? Number one. Number two, yeah? Prophet Muhammad came into Mecca. He came with an army, yeah? Jesus did not come into Jerusalem with an army. He came on a donkey with no army. Number two, three, Muhammad was in many, many battles. Jesus never fought one battle. Number four, Muhammad killed his enemies. Number five, Jesus, when he died on a cross, he said, forgive them. Okay. Well, I want to say, sir, that you have been most excellent, most worthy of discussions. And I've really enjoyed it. And I respect you. This is the Muslim. I, I respect you. I copy. I respect you. There's power in the blood of Jesus. There is power, power, a wonder working power. In the blood of the Lamb, there is power, power, a wonder-working power. In the blood of the Lamb, there is joy, joy, a wonder-working joy. In the blood of the Lamb, there is joy, joy. A wonder working joy in the blood of the Lamb. There is hope, hope, a wonder working hope in the blood of the Lamb. There is hope, hope, a wonder working hope in the blood of the Lamb. There is peace. Peace, a wonder work in peace in the blood of the Lamb. There is peace, peace, a wonder work in peace in the blood of the Lamb. There is hope, hope, a wonder work in hope in the blood of the Lamb. There is hope. Hope, a wonder working hope in the blood of the Lamb. There is joy, joy, a wonder working joy in the blood of the Lamb. There is joy, joy, a wonder working joy in the blood of the Lamb. There's joy in the Lord today. If you come to know him as your Lord and Savior, you come to trust him as your king, then you'll come to know him as your God, and you'll be right with God, clean with God, washed in the blood of the Lamb. You'll know his forgiveness, you'll know his cleansing, and you'll know his mercy in your life. 
learning and is a good thing. I have a degree from Manchester University. Learning is a good thing, but knowing Christ is better, my friends. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. To know Christ, to have a meaning to your life, a purpose to your life, to know the Messiah, to know the Saviour, that is a beautiful thing to know the Lord today. To know Him as your God, to know Him as your Saviour, to know Him as your Lord. Have you got any questions, sir? Got a question, sir? Hey? Got a question, sir? Actually, yes, I am, actually. Okay, what's your question then, sir? <laughs> I was Amex Forces yeah. for over 22 years. Wow, great. Respect to you, sir. And the Royal Marines, have you ever heard of them? Oh yeah, I'm very proud of them, sir. Very proud well, of that's you. That's what I am. And have you got any idea what's going to happen on this weekend? No. Oh, you yeah. mean you mean you mean the the election with Trump and Hillary, or no? This weekend coming. No, no. Well, if you don't know. Oh, you mean you you mean the you mean the cenotaph and things. I'm talking about the, the, the remembrance. Of oh Sunday. yeah, remember Sunday? Yeah, yeah. So if you don't know about, what, what's about that, that. What's that? What's that there? What's that there? It's a cross. It's a poppy, sir. I've got a poppy there, sir. A poppy? Yes. Yeah. I've got a poppy on me, sir. Well, let's just say I know more about it than you will ever know. Bloody well, Sunday. No. Well, I respect that, sir. I respect that, sir. But do you know Jesus as your Lord? I was in a force for over 20 years. Yeah. Have you ever been in the forces? I was in the cadet force, sir. No, I mean forces around the world. I've had 45 of my friends who have died. Oh. I'm ex Royal Marines, so don't give me any bloody blah blah crap. But do you know the Lord Jesus as your saviour, sir? No, it won't, because I'll tell you. Why? Yeah, Why? Why not? Because I'll be getting all dressed up next Sunday doing what my so what I am. So what I do, sir. I'm so I'm Marines and I'm, I'm doing it. it so what I, I do. do. You, know, I in the, you know in the First World War and the Second World War, everybody was given an, a New Testament. Did you know that? Oh, I all the army. Oh, do know that. In, in the army, did you know that, yeah? Oh, I, I know all about and the, in the army. And in the New I'm Testament. Forces and in the New Testament. Anything you and, in the new, and in the New Testament, what did Jesus do for you? Jesus did the do jack shit. He died for you. He died on a cross for you. No, I'll tell you. you no, know, he took your punishment. He Me and my he took friends. Your, he took your punishment. I've died for this country. And Jesus died for you, sir. Jesus no, died for you on that cross. You speak of he, he gave his life for you. He shed his blood for you, sir. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. He took, I'll tell you he took your punishment. He took your punishment, sir. God bless you. God bless you, ma'am. Yeah. Have you got a question, ma'am? God bless you, all right. God bless you. Shed his blood for you on that cross. He gave his life for you on that cross and died that you may live. And died that you may know his love today and gave his life for you. Shed his blood for you. Gave his all for you on that cross. He died for you on that cross. Shed his blood that you may live, that you may have hope, that you may be forgiven, that you may be cleansed, that you may be washed, that you may know his mercy, you may know his grace, and you may know his peace. Hi folks, are you okay today? It's good to be with you. We're just sharing the word of God today in Wigan. It says, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherein Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. It says, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherein Christ has made us free. Uh, and Christ has made us free. Christ has made us free. Christ can set us free from condemnation. If you feel condemned, if you feel that you have sinned or done something wrong, and you know that you've done something wrong, Jesus Christ can set us free. He says that here in the word, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherein Christ has made us free. There's no liberty in religion. If we try to follow rules and regulations, 
There's no liberty, there's no freedom in that. So not to stand fast in that. Or drugs. Drugs cannot help you. If you try to stand fast in drugs, it says stand fast in the liberty, in the liberty, stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made us free. Christ has made us free in the liberty of his death. When Christ died on that cross, he set us free from the condemnation of sin. The Bible says there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ because Christ died on your behalf. The Bible teaches that God is a holy God. The Bible says, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is to come. The angels worship God. The angels say, holy, holy, holy. They worship God and they say that God is holy. Holy, 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 God is a holy God. Because God is a holy God, He cannot look upon sin. Sin is the breaking of God's law. That is sin. When the Bible says, do not lie, and you lie, that is sin. When the Bible says, do not commit adultery, and you sleep around, that's sin. When the Bible says, don't have any other gods before me, and you worship your car, or your mobile phone, that is sin. The Bible says, don't use the Lord's name in vain. If you curse and swear, that is a sin. The Bible says that you should honor your father and mother. The Bible says that we should honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. The Bible says these things. And if we break the commandments of God, then the Bible says the wrath of God abides upon us. The Bible warns us there is a hell. The Bible says the weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Bible says there is a hell. The Bible says if we continue to walk in things that are wrong, we will go to hell. But the Bible also says that Jesus Christ died for your sin. It says, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherein Christ has made us free. To stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made us free is to stand fast in the gospel. Paul says in Galatians chapter 1 in the Bible, the Holy Bible, he said, Cursed is anyone who preaches not the gospel. Now the gospel is not of man. Men have ideas how to get to heaven. Men think they can get to heaven by political correctness or religion or their own intelligence or their own ability. But the Bible does not teach that. The Bible teaches that the only way to heaven is to be saved by grace. It says, by grace you are saved in Ephesians. By grace. By the undeserved mercy of God. God offers us mercy that we did not deserve. In the Bible, in Luke chapter 15, the prodigal son left home. And he enjoyed his life. He had women and he enjoyed himself. But he spent all that he had. And he realized he made a mess of things and he was there being fed by the pigs. And he said, I'll go back to my father. And he thought when he went back to his father, his father would slap him in the face. No. The father put a ring on his finger and he said, my son was lost, but now is found. Are you lost or are you found today? Are you lost or are you found? If you're going on your own life, rejecting God and trampling the commandments of God, if you're lying, if you're stealing, if you're sleeping around, if you're worshipping anything but God, if you're cursing the name of God, and you might even say, Jay, I'm good. But if you're not believing in Jesus Christ, you're walking on the broad way to hell. There's a narrow way and a broad way. The narrow way is drugs, the narrow way is sex, the narrow way is political correctness. That is the narrow way to hell. But there is a broad way, sorry, a broad way to hell. But there is a narrow way to heaven. And that narrow way is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the one that paid the penalty for your sin. 
Jesus Christ is the one that paid the penalty for your sin. He's the one that paid the penalty for your debt. Stand fast. Therefore, in the liberty wherein Christ has made us free. Some of you, some of you, some of you are addicted to sin. Some of you are addicted to sin. You're addicted to doing wrong. Can hey, I ask you a question? You can. I'm filming. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. Question. Yes. So, God created us in his perfect image. Yes, right? yes. Right, and how he wanted us all to be. Yes, yes. Right. So how is it a sin to be gay? Because the Bible says, the Bible says in Romans chapter 1, it says that he lets people go their own way and he calls it a sin in Romans chapter 1. But if he created us in his perfect image, and how he wanted us all to be, and it's in your genetics to be gay, how is it a sin to be gay? You Isn't see, he basically contradicting himself? No, you have free will to do what you want. You have free will now to talk to me, yeah. and you have free will to run down the road, to eat chocolate. You have free will, so God gave you the free will to, to choose. Yeah. So you can choose whether to live for him or live for yourself. Uh, our identity in modern society, in modern society, our, our identity is our sexuality. Yeah. yeah. But in the Bible, our identity is our relationship to God. In the first identity for you and me is that we're sons and daughters of the living God, not oh, our sexuality. I that, you know. But if it's in our genetics and stuff to be gay, yeah. then and He created us in that image and how He wanted us to be. How can they then turn around and say? It is a sin. Well, here's a question then. Is the Bible the Word of God? To me personally, no. Right. As so, much, I used to go to church and obviously, like, I, I do have the Bible at home and everything, but... Yeah, yeah. To me, no. Okay. How does anyone know it was actually his doings? How does anyone know it was actually wrote from yeah, his yeah. stuff and yeah, that it's yeah. not been twisted? And stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really appreciate what like, you're saying. Like, there's parts of it I do believe, and parts I do stand by. I, I, but others, like yeah. that, it they contradict it all. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate the fact that you're talking to me with respect in a civil way, and I'm listening to what you say. Because it's polite. And but I would say, like, the moment you said you didn't believe it as the full word of God is, is then we've got a clash of that. We've got a clash going on between two, two different worldviews. Mm. My, my authority is the Bible and your authority is how you feel or culture, you see. And so if, if you don't believe the Bible, then you can Not do... Not all parts but, but, no. I mean, as the word, you know, as the word yeah. of God. If you don't believe that, then you're going to have issues but if you do believe the Bible, the Bible tells you that your identity, first of all, is that you're a child of God first, before your sexuality, and that that's the identity that you need to focus on first. So the Bible says we're new creatures in Christ. Right. The Bible says that Christ died uh, for all sinners. Mm -hmm. And if you appropriate Christ and trust in Him, then He becomes your identity. I have, I have sexual desires, and those sexual desires I could feed if I wanted to. Mm -hmm. But I choose not to do that because I, I ask God to help me. And I, I, I try to not let my sexual identity be my identity, mm -hmm. but Christ be my identity. Well, because he died going for me. off that then, yeah. then but, why is the all the diseases and stuff like that, like why is yeah, all that yeah. there? But if, if there is no God, if there is no God, life's a bitch and they would die. I believe that's true anyway. Yeah, yeah. Whether but, so, God is there so, or not. So, so asking that question, asking that question, well, why does God allow suffering and evil? If there is no God, there's no evil. Suffering doesn't mean anything. But because suffering does mean something, that's pointing us to God. That we're more than just dust on the edge of the universe. That we are actually human yeah. beings. We're more, we're more important to God. That's why you suffer. That's why you love. Because you're not a piece of dust on the edge of the universe. You're made to be more than that. No, but why you, do you is understand everything... what I'm getting at? Yeah, I get where you're coming from. But it's like, <laughs> why is everything that? Why is why is everything like all all the illnesses and everything all you can the, get? Well, well, there's why all... why is all that, that? If God wanted us to go our own way, yeah, and He gave us the options to go here, the whatever, how we wanted to be, yeah, yeah, then why are all them there? Okay, like, well, AIDS, cancer, everything right, like I'll... that. 
wire all them though. Okay, there's a philosopher, if anybody wants to study it, because they'll be listening on the camera, called Alvin Plantinger. He's an American philosopher. And he talked about that the, this is the universe that could only be, because in this universe, God created us to have love. And when he created Adam and Eve, he created them with a free will to, to be able to either love God or not love God, either to love each other. But they decided to not love God, and they decided to rebel against him. And so, because he made us with the capacity to love, that is why we have the mess that we have, because in that capacity to love, we also have the capacity to hate. And he could, he could have made us as robots, he could have made Adam and Eve as a robot, yeah. but they would not have been loving, or could love. You see what right. I mean? So, so when, they, when they rebelled, according to the Bible, yeah. if you believe in evolution, no problem, but we believe that God created the world. Yeah. And when Adam and Eve was created, yeah. they had the free will to love or to reject, and they rejected. And that unfortunately brought the mess, the mess in the world. Now, ultimately, nobody, no philosopher, no theologian, nobody ultimately knows or has the answer to the problem of evil. Do you remember Job? He went through all that suffering. Mm -hmm. And he said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. So nobody can fully answer it, but Christianity gives you the resources. Because God didn't give you a, a need. If, 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 you, if you had your someone dying in your family yeah. who's really, really suffering, or if you was part of the Jewish people of the Second World War, and you'd seen your family slaughtered, and then I came up to you with a PhD and clever and smart and give you a cool answer to the problem of evil, that's not going to help you when you've lost your family. So, oh, so can I just finish? It? Can I just finish? So God doesn't give you a neat little philosophical trick. Yeah. What He does, He comes down in Jesus Christ and he suffered with us, because when they whipped him, he was suffering for you. When he was on the cross, he was suffering for you and dying for you. So God comes down and suffers for us and demonstrates what it is to live a life of love. He sacrificed his life for us. And that's what he wants you to that. And that's what he wants for you. If all that stems from is how Adam and Eve could choose to love or rebel and the children's rebel, Yeah. That doesn't still add up as to why. That's like saying, if I walked over and hit you, then she gets the blame for it. That's what? like, in a sense, passing it on. Yeah. Because it's not saying, that is not saying, why is everything here? Why is there all the diseases and everything like that? Right. That's like saying, oh, well, they're here because as and Eve rebelled. But you're, you're looking at it from a, a modern post-enlightenment culture. If you go to like uh, an African culture, uh, they have chiefs, they have heads. Oh, I've met chiefs, they are really you know, So it, we're looking at it from a Western modern culture. But we, so like if we went to Africa, we'd look mm -hmm. at things in a different perspective, or China or Japan. Mm -hmm. And so when we're looking back in the Bible and going back to Old Testament culture, you know, Adam was like a chief, he was the head. So mm -hmm. whatever he did would bring results for everybody else it, it, and even today we have that kind of idea like if if uh, Trump came to on holiday to Iran and the Iranian president there uh, punched Trump it wouldn't be a private matter it would it, it would bring <laughs> it would bring two nations to war yeah. so so ahead ahead of a human race as consequences for everybody else so Adam was like the head and I, so if you're like thinking from a worldly rationalistic point of view mm -hmm. it makes sense what you're saying but if you're willing to like, just look at the culture of the Old Testament and, and, get your, and allow God to show you that there might be a different perspective. Like I said, it's been like, for a and lot of it... I really appreciate the conversation, yeah, you're really for nice. For a lot of it, it is contradicting a lot. And that is my problem with it. I have sat there, I have read it, I have a copy at home. I used to go to church myself. Yeah. But a lot of it, to me, is contradicting. But what, what do you think it's all about, the Christianity or the message of, what is, what, why do you think we're here, what we're, what we're trying to do, just, just out of interest? Like, it's how you see it. Yeah, yeah. Because there are times where you can look at the Bible and the bit you read or the bit you go to look for relates and you do find comfort in it. Yeah, yeah. But then there is a lot where it does contradict itself. Yeah, such as? Like that, it's a sin to do this, it's a sin to do that. But God created us how we was meant to be. 
God created us how he wanted us to be, how he wanted us to feel. And yeah, he may give us a choice and path and an option of which one to take. But overall, he wanted us to be like that and do that. And he created us in his image of how he wanted every one of us to be. But yet it's still a sin to do certain things. Well, I think that's a big I, one. I really appreciate it and you're really nice to talk to. I, I, all I would say is that uh, just to be a bit more open-minded and to just like read the Gospel of John and then read some Christians. Like if you get a, a card of Kieran, I've got one we can share it. If you get if you get that card, you'll really find that helpful. Uh, give me an answer. He's a guy who goes to universities in America and he has discussions like this. And all these questions that you have, you can email him. And and just invest. All I would say is just be open and investigate because we're out here today because we want to share the love of God, not to condemn you, but to tell you that Christ gave His life for you and that you can have a new life in Him. We all have our issues. I'm not here to judge anybody or condemn anybody. But I, what I am here to do is I'm not here to please secular culture or political correctness. I'm here as a messenger to proclaim what God says in His Word. And, it, and His Word says that Christ died for you. And if you turn to Him and ask for forgiveness, He'll forgive you and, and you'll have this joy and peace. And when you know who you are, you, you, you know where you're going and you know what to do. And people are searching for their identity. And uh, sexual identity, there's a lady called uh, uh, Rosemary Butterfield. Uh, you can listen to her on Legionnaire Ministries uh, or just Google her. She was a, a lesbian uh, professor in gay theory. Uh, so she lectured in gay theory, she was a lesbian, and she could not stand Christians coming on her university campus preaching. So she wrote an article attacking them. And then a minister wrote to her and said, why are you attacking us? Why don't we just have a rational conversation? So he invited her for dinner. And she thought, wait a minute, he's not as judgmental as I thought. And then she, he asked her, give me some intellectual defenses of your gay identity. And she couldn't give her any rational defence. And, and this is the thing that I find with most gay people. I'm not condemning them because my sister's lesbian. But when I ask for a rational defence, I don't get rational defence. You're, you're the most, one of the most rational I've met. Most react emotionally. And all I'm saying is that this, this lady, she was a lesbian and she lectured in gay theory. She got converted and she's now married to a guy and she's got kids. Now this is a woman who was a, a, an absolute intellectual and, and also had a gay, a lesbian lover for many, many years. So all I'm saying is that this culture has its ideologies and its ways and it says certain ways of behaving are right. But I would say that if you follow the Bible, it, it's countercultural. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be popular. I'm going to be seen as homophobic, hate mongering and all the rest. And I know that Especially when I'm, no, I know why I'm, I know when I come out here, that is the criticism, that is the attack, and whatever. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm determined personally to walk in love and to walk in truth. The Bible says that we have to walk in love and truth. Now, if there's a little child here, and there's a fire, and I don't tell the truth about the fire, I don't really love them. And so. Culture today talks about love a lot, but it, it doesn't want to know love and truth. And I'm saying, telling you and sharing with you, I believe the Bible teaches about love and truth. Sometimes truth is hard to take. But the truth is, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And if you open up to him, you'll find a joy and a peace. It won't be easy. I'm not saying your identity is going to be solved. I'm not saying all, you're going to have easy answers. I'm not saying you're not going to struggle or you, you have uh, struggles with your identity or that you'll still like women or whatever or I'm not saying you are a, a gay or lesbian person I'm not saying those will go away straight away or whatever but what I'm saying is that you'll find a new identity that will give you hope and a future in Jesus Christ not only in this life but the future uh, thank you very much God bless you and thank you for your time thank you God bless you